In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a Lord for your Northern Alliance army in Kings of War. Now, this is a HQ model, so the video is a little bit longer, but stick with it right till the end to see the great result that we get. If this is your first time on the channel, then please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified of all my new videos. For this video, I'm going to use mainly Games Workshop paints. Don't worry though, in the description down below, I will put the Vallejo and Army Painter equivalent. Let's get started with this Northern Alliance Lord. So a couple of things. I've sprayed it and primed it with black, and then I've put some white over the top in kind of a zenith hole, just to give me an idea of where the shadows are. I've probably been a little over-enthusiastic with the white, so he's a bit brighter than I normally would like, but that's fine. So the first colour we're going to do is we're going to paint the wood, and the reason I'm going to paint the wood first is that that will allow me to then go in and do the metallics next, because the metallics are the biggest part, but if I did the metallics first, it might be a little more awkward to get the wood done. So the colour I'm going to use is Gorthor Brown, just to base up the wood. So we've got the wood on the shield, and we've got the handle on the, the axe as well. I tried some wash in there to see how that worked, and it wasn't that great. So the Gorthor Brown will give us a nice base. Make sure you don't put on too thick, because there's grains of wood on there, so you want to make sure they preserve those. And all the colours, I will put um, the alternatives in the description as well. So if you don't use Games Workshop paints, or you've only got Army Paint or Vallejo to hand, I'll make sure that the translations are there for you. So all I'm doing with the Gorthor Brown is just working my way around all the wood. And once I've done that, we'll come back and we'll look to give it a little bit of shade and a little bit of a highlight and then we'll get on with the metallics next once that Gorthor Brown is dry just take some null oil and just throw that all over just to darken it down and bring out the wood grain that's modelled on the miniature as ever, I'm using my Windsor & Newton Series 7 for this. I'll put links to them all in the description, so please feel free to check that out. Make sure you get all the wood that you painted, let that dry. And then we'll come back and we'll have a little look at highlighting it all. Don't worry if you get any null oil on the strapping. Because we're going to paint over that later anyway. So let that dry, and then we'll come back and do some highlighting. Once that null oil is dried, you should have a nice dark wood. So just take some more Gorthor Brown and just look to pick out some of the lines along the wood grain on the shield. Don't worry too much if you paint over some of these studs that are going to be metallic. That's absolutely fine. What you just want to do is pick up and just paint some straight lines along that wood grain there and you can see straight away that that's starting to look nice and wooden same for the handle here Let's just pick up those raised areas nice and simple and as you come towards the bottom here you can just start to pull these lines into kind of one and that'll give you a, a lighter bottom to the handle so we're going for an approximation of the the box art that Mantic have got on their on their website. Obviously, there will be some differences. A little bit of artistic license. If you want to copy it identically, then all the colours I'm going to use in this will help you do that. And then what I want to do is just take some Ushabti bone and mix that into same amount of Gorthor brown, really, just to give it a little bit of a a lighter look and then towards the top we just want to kind of get some little streaks in here so I've switched to a smaller brush for this stage this is a Windsor Newton series 7 size 0 whereas I kind of use a size 1 for most things and all we're doing again is we're just kind of imitate some of that wood grain and it might look a little bright to start with but eventually it'll kind of dull itself down and blend in quite nicely. I'll do the same on the handle. All the way around. So there we are. Once you've done that, 
we're going to move on to the armor next so i'm just going to finish off this little bottom bit here and we'll have a look at the metal and the gold armor so the color i'm going to use for the steel armor is iron hands steel um, you can use any dark armor for this really um, i find the iron hand steel covers really well but you can use lead belcher gun metal if you've got the army painters range and all we're looking to do is just paint up all of the silver armor bits so we've got a buckle and a strap in there uh, and if you're not sure where they are then just have a look at the the box art that's out there this should go over in one coverage as well so just work your way around nicely don't forget as well you've got the studs on the shield and all that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of the gold trim as well and for the gold trim I'm going to use Retribute Drama and this is really simple don't don't too much on your brush um, but you just want to paint it over all the bits that you want to be gold so take your time with this because the more time you take here the less time you're going to spend going back and correcting uh, things a bit later on so just work your way around all the bits you want to be silver all the bits you want to be gold and then we'll come back we'll put a quick shade on them and then once that's dry we'll highlight and then we're on to the more organic parts of the model once the silver and gold is done just take some nylon oil and just use this to shade it down now i put quite a big lump of it on there so i'm not going to leave that i want to move that around as much as i can and again i'm trying not to go into all these areas where we've got some of the fur and i'm putting this over the gold as well as the the silver and the reason for that is i want quite a dirty gold i didn't want to go for a brass kind of gold uh, which would have been darker but i did want to make it a kind of a, a bright gold that's been dulled with a bit of a bit of grime so work this around all the metallics you've just painted don't let it settle uh, on the higher point you can let it settle in some of the the low points there and make sure you get uh, some delineation between the gold and the silver work your way around let it dry and then we'll come back we'll highlight it and move on to the some of the clothing next now that null oil is dry we're just going to highlight up some of the metallics so the highlight for silver is chrome which is from Vallejo uh, the model air range all we're looking to do is just find all those little bits that are popping up that we can see that will reflect some of the light so where you can always try and move your brush along some of the edges because what that does is just makes it a lot easier to get a nice smooth highlight pick up some of the tops of these bolts there as well maybe the inside of the the bottom of the shield there might reflect some light so just work your way around you can see I'm struggling to find some huge areas now on the the feet that I think are worth highlighting but turn it around here we've got the the armor there and what's really good about the design on on some of this armor is it's quite battered so that gives you a nice kind of opportunity to work some highlights in a little jagged like that there so working on the fingers and then we'll kind of work along the top edge here of the weapon because we want that to look nice and sharp even though it's a bit battered we want the metal work to be highlighted as well so that's the silver and we'll also do some of the gold I'll go back and finish the rest of the highlighting as well before uh, before we move on to the next stage. So the gold highlight is Liberator Gold. And all we're going to do with this is just very similar. 
we're just going to pop it on where we think the the gold reflection needs it the most just like that a little bit on the shield a little bit there so again work way around the model pop some reflection in those areas where you think you need it and then when we come back we'll start on some of the clothing the first bit of clothing i want to do is the this undersuit that goes underneath the armor so the color i'm going to use just to to base that is doomball brown I'm trying to find the best place to show you because it's not a huge amount on the model of it so i just want to work that doomball brown brown in make sure you get the um the trim as well we don't want to worry too much about going over some of the the teeth decorations because we will go back and tidy all that up just be careful you don't get it over some of the bits you've already painted so work your way around get this doomball brown into everywhere and then we'll come back and we'll give it a bit of a shade and a highlight before we move on to the the next bit of clothing Once that Doomball Brown is dry, let's go back to Null Oil to shade it. And I'm just going to throw this over. Being careful we don't go over some of the bits we've already finished. We want to make sure we put this onto all the gaps. If it pools a little bit like it has underneath there for me, just put your brush in and you can pull some of it away. And let that dry. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll give it a highlight. It's, most of it's dark anyway, so we'll, we'll just give it the one highlight. We don't go over the top with the highlight in. And then we'll have a look at um, getting the furs prepped and some of the underclothes prepped as well. So to highlight that doom bowl, once the null oil is dry, you just want to take a little bit of scrag brown. Not much at all. We just want to kind of edge highlight where we can which is just kind of in here really it's not a huge amount of highlighting to do because like I said this is quite a dark part of the model and it's quite well covered so just work your way around do as much as little as you want I'd always sort of start off with less because you can always add more just like that with the scrag brown and then that's that kind of highlighting done so like I said it's not too much uh, so the next bit we'll have a look at is the kind of the trousers and the sleeves so I'm going to let that scrag brown dry and we'll come back and we'll have a little look at that next the colour I'm going to use for the trousers and the sleeves is going to be a bad and black you don't need too much of this so on the sleeves we've just got kind of a little bit Showing through there, a little bit there, and then for the trousers again, we've got a tiny little bit showing just on the back there, and hopefully you can see this on the camera, the back of the leg here. And I'm not going to highlight this because I think actually it's kind of hidden. I don't think it actually needs a highlight, um, so I'm just going to leave that. Just going to touch it up in there, so that's that part done. We've got a little bit of sleeve in here to do. Uh, what we'll do next is we'll go and we'll prep all the fur. So the colour we're going to use for that is wraith bone. So I'm going to prep it up with the wraith bone, get that on the palette. We'll come back and then we'll uh, we'll get that all painted. We'll also do the skull and we'll just get these teeth back to a, a lighter colour as well ready to shade them and colour them so what we'll do is we'll take the wraith bone and we're just going to paint this all over the fur all the bits that we think are going to be fur um, and any kind of teeth trophies that the model's got so the pre-shading with the Zenthal uh, priming should help us with this a little bit as well 
uh, but just be careful and take care to not paint over anything you've already finished but also to get everything covered so you don't get any kind of huge differences in colour going on so I'm just going to work my way around all the fur on the model and then we'll come back and we'll pop some colour on there and you may have guessed I'm using Wraithbone which is part of the contrast paint range so I'm going to use contrast paints to help colour in this fur and give us some really nice shading and we may or may not need to highlight we'll see how it works out in the end but for now let's just make sure we get all the fur covered so we'll come back and we'll get the contrast paint on the go the other thing before we do go on to using the skeleton bone is you want to base coat this skull of something with the wraith bone and you also want to go around and pick out all these teeth as well so if you were really tidy when you were doing the doom bold brown this would be nice and easy if like me you were not tidy at all then this will be just take a little bit more time so just work your way around, make sure you get all of them in. And then when we come back, we'll have all, got all this finished so we can have a, a think about shading the fur first and then we'll work on the bones next. For all the fur on the model, what we're going to do is take some skeleton hood contrast paint. And we're just going to paint that all over the fur. And as that dries, it's going to give us a really nice, dirty, blonde kind of fur colour. So work your way around, make sure you don't miss any spots, because that will look a little bit weird. If you want to put a little bit more in on the shadows, that works as well. And just keep working. While it's wet, it's quite easy to, you know go in and add to it. Don't worry too much if you go onto the cloak because we'll be obviously coming back to that at another at another time. So work your way around, get this on all the fur. Don't put it on the teeth or the bone skull however because uh, we're going to use a different colour to shade those so that it, it comes across and looks different to the fur because uh, otherwise it'll all look the same. So I'm going to carry on get this done and when we come back we'll do the teeth and the bones next. The skeleton hoard is drying. I'm going to take some Agrax Earth Shade and I'm going to use this to wash the skull. So work it into all the recesses. Try not to get a like, pool unless it's you know someone like the eye socket where the pooling really works. Just work it all the way around. We're also going to use this on the teeth as well, so all you do with the teeth, just work it over. Just to give them a little bit of a, a shade. And then we'll go back to the skull, so hopefully all that will dry and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at highlighting some of it. When that skeleton hoard is dry, we really want to just highlight and pick out some of the fur to kind of really make it pop. So I'm just using Pallid Witch Flesh, which is quite a light colour, and I'm just working it around some of the fur bits that are kind of popping out. So just gives it some extra definition. Now you don't have to paint every single bit of fur because you will be there for you know quite a while. I mean, if you want, feel free to do it, but I'm not, I'm just going to pick out some of the more prominent ones um, on the back here, just thin strokes with the brush and any sort of along here which are really going to catch the light because this is just all adding to the kind of variance in the colour, giving some nice highlights just along there. So work your way around your own model and pop some pallid witch flesh where you think it really works uh, and then we'll come back and we'll highlight the bone and the teeth.
for highlighting the teeth and the bone of the skull, what I'm going to use is just white. So I'm using white scar. Um, and all I'm going to do for the teeth is I'm just going to follow along with the shape of the sculpt there. Nice and simple. So it just gives you a good spot. And then when it comes to the skull, again, I'm just going to work my way around the most prominent parts. Leaving that Grax Earth shade in the recesses. But also, I'm not overly taxing myself in terms of working up the highlights on the base. So you get the best kind of bang for your buck that way. When it goes to the horns itself, then I'm just going to thin lines, picking up the design. Just there like that. Nice and straightforward. So there we are. That's the skull highlighted, the teeth highlighted. Uh, when we come back, we'll have a work on the leather. And then we'll work on the cloak. And then the last thing we'll do is the face and all the hair. For all the leather straps, we're going to use dryad bark. So this is a nice dark brown, but it's kind of a, a ready dark brown. So we've got all the straps where the arm is attached. We've got the straps around the weapon here. So again, be careful not to catch anything you've already painted. Let's just work that around. And the other thing we've got is we've got on the teeth, we've got where they're attached. So we just want to catch those bits with this as well. So that we can give them a bit of colour too. So work away around the model, all the bits where the teeth, teeth are attached, all the bits wrapped around the, the weapon and all the bits sort of around the back here where you've got leather strapping for the armour attachments. Get that done, we'll come back and then we'll highlight it up. So to highlight the little bits of leather, I just want to take a little bit of scrag brown, just put some really thin lines there and similarly on the weapon Some thin lines to differentiate how this bit of leather stands out in comparison to the kind of the wood. So work your way around, get all that leather highlighted that you've uh, just popped in, and then when we come back, we'll have a little look at the hair and the face. For the face, we're just going to base coat that with some Kiss Left Flesh. So just thin some down and work it into the the face, into the eye sockets as well. If you put a little too much on, then just put your brush back in and work it around. So you've got a nice even coverage. I'm trying not to paint onto the the hair itself, but that could be unavoidable. So I'm just going to let that dry, and when it's dry we'll come back and we'll shade it. So shading the flesh is really easy, just a little bit of Reichland flesh here, you're just going to work it in. Now while I'm doing the, f the flesh I'm kind of thinking about the, the hair as well, and I think Whilst this is a, a leader, we're kind of maybe doing a little bit older than perhaps the box art shows. So let that Reichland flesh here dry, and then we'll come back, we'll highlight the flesh, and we'll think about the hair as well. So that Reichland flesh here is dry, so we're just going to go back to some Kislev flesh. And we're going to use this to pick up the prominent areas. So there's not too much to do there. But what we're going to do then is we're just going to pull some lines across. the head just to age him a little bit and then what we're going to do is we'll just let that dry on the model a little bit let's take some flayed one flesh which is again it's a it's a much lighter color than the kids left flesh so we don't want too much and we're just going to use this to accentuate what we've already got just going to 
paint those lines across get those cheekbones in and that bottom look so that's the flesh kind of finish for now let's uh, let that dry and then we move on to the hair and the beard once that grey is dry I'm just going to take some Agrax Earth shade and wash the hair with it and what this does is this kind of gives you a brown tint so rather than going full on grey this will make it look as though this Jarl is or this Lord is in the middle of of going grey so we still got some of the the brown tint there it gives a nice earthy look to the hair now if you've got it on some of the bits that you've already painted like the skin then just go in and, and wick it away with your brush so I'm just work this in gently I may add a another coat of Agrax earth shade uh, let's see how we go, but let that dry and we'll come back and highlight it. As I was waiting for that Agrax Earth shade to dry, I kind of realised that actually the model's got some quite pronounced brows, so I painted in the eyebrows. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and I'm going to highlight using Dawnstone the hair. And again, I'm not doing all of it, just doing the most prominent parts. So you're kind of looking for where the model's been designed so just pick them up and you're leaving the kind of the browny grey in the recesses so you get that kind of effect that we were going for so just work your way around the beard and the moustache with that and then you've got the kind of the plaited parts of the beard so you want to kind of dot the paint on like that and that way you can make sure you get all the bits you need to get so let that dry and we'll give it another highlight and then that's the hair done and the face and we'll have a look at this kind of signature bit here which is blue on the box art or like a turquoisey blue and we're going to do the same so first off we're going to finish the hair so just pop a lighter gray so some administratum gray and we're going to do the same kind of thing here where we're going to look for those pronounced bits of hair leaving the darker colors in the recesses and again I'm just using kind of dotting motions around because it gives the impression then that there's depth to the hair and texture to the hair where perhaps that's not modeled on the head itself and this then just gives a nice kind of lighter look so take your time and get those eyebrows done as well and that hair is looking pretty good now so you don't want to overdo it just take your time if you're not sure let it dry you can always go back in with a little bit more but I'm quite happy with that so I'm gonna let that dry and we'll come back and we'll do some of the material material is really going to provide some contrast on the model because we've got lots of earthy colors on there so the colors I'm using is Sotec Green. Now I'm going to do this little bit of cloth down here so just take your time doing that make sure you don't go over anything you've already painted uh, especially some of the lighter areas you may need to put two coats on there but take your time you'll kind of know yourself if you need to do that a little bit extra now we're also going to do this bit here on the shield so again take your time work it on if you need to put two coats on I'm like I'm looking at that and I probably will because it's quite thin then do so and we'll come back and we'll shade and highlight it once that so tech green is dry I'm going to shade it down with some Nelne oil I'm going to get a decent amount on there but won't so much that it swamps so tech green so just work it on and then as it dries keep an eye on it if it starts to pool then just wick it away with your brush so you see there that's starting to pool a little bit and just wick that away there we are so we'll let that dry 
when we come back we'll highlight it so once that nano oil is dry we're just going to highlight it and to highlight the sotec green we're just going to go back to that original base color and work that in leaving the kind of nano oil in the recesses a little bit so it's not a huge amount of difference there it just kind of gives a just a kind of top edge highlight of it there and then what we're going to do just to get some real kind of differentiation in color is we're just going to take some Echamp de Bone. We're going to mix that in with the Sotec green again, about 50-50. And that kind of gives us a kind of greeny blue. So what we want to do with this is just use it quite sparingly like that. We just kind of want to get this along the top and see how I'm kind of moving the brush is quite, quite jagged. And the reason for that is because this material is quite jagged as well. So we don't want smooth highlights per se. We want the paint to be smooth, but we don't necessarily want the highlights to be smooth. And then as that kind of dries in, it'll really start to work into the, the colour. So it's kind of like a like a scuffed leather type effect that we've got going on there. And we want to kind of do the same a little bit in here, but not as much underneath because obviously it's 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 hidden and in shadow by everything so that's looking pretty good so we're going to let that dry and the last thing we've got to do before we base the miniature is the cloak so i'm going to let it dry and we'll get set up for the cloak the color we're going to use for that is steel legion drab so get the steel legion drab and we just want to work this all over the the cloak don't worry about getting it over the the stitching we'll tidy that up like we did with the teeth earlier on there's not much to see at this stage it's just making sure that we've got everything covered and as you can see there you're probably going to need a couple of coats as well so work your way around we're going to do the outside we'll do the inside as well get that into one nice solid coat of steel legion drab and we'll come back and we'll have a look at highlighting and, and shading it a little bit for shading the cloak we're going to use null oil and what we want to do is we just want to kind of work this into some of the recesses because you've got quite a few folds on the cloak but we don't want it to be a really heavy shade because what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to kind of go back over it and blend back up to the steel legion drab so what we're going to do is work it round but don't let it pool anywhere now where we've got some kind of deep incisions there you can kind of work it up in two and you can see straight away that this is kind of giving you a nice dirty kind of brown color and the same goes for the inside of the cloak now the inside of the cloak is mostly dark so we'll give it some null oil shading but what we may do is we may just give that a coat of uh, steel legion drab mixed with a bit of black just to kind of give a, a darker kind of color we'll see how that dries and we'll make a call on that a bit later on so I'm just going to work this round so that's all the kind of cloak done the internals as well so let that dry keep an eye on it um, a little bit of depth around the stitching is fine and then once that's dry we'll come back have a look and we'll highlight it up so that's dried quite nicely for me so i hope it has for you as well so what we're going to do now is we're just going to take some thin steel legion drab and we're just going to highlight the kind of the big swathes of of cloak and this is quite thin which means it'll blend into um blend into the kind of the brown underneath quite nicely as it dries so I'm just looking for those raised edges, just going to pull paint along them. Just like that. So let that dry because that's giving you some nice contrast on the cloak itself. In terms of underneath what I went for, I just went for the kind of the null oil and actually it's just going to be a dirty look inside so I'm quite happy with that, I'm just going to leave it there like that. So work your way around the cloak, get that Steel Legion drab on, and then we'll come back. We'll probably put like another final highlight on there 
just to make it pop a little bit. So the last highlight we're going to do on the cloak is we're going to take that old faithful Shamti bone and mix that kind of equal parts with the steel legion drab and we're just going to get some nice thin lines drawn on there and again it'll be quite bright to start with but as the paint starts to dry it'll blend back down so just take your time don't overdo this stage this is kind of just designed to make the cloak pop out a little bit so work your way around now the stitching do that exactly the same way as we did the teeth so i'm going to just take some pallid witch flesh and i'm just going to dot around it if i feel like i need it needs that extra white highlight i will otherwise i'll leave it there and then this lord is finished and he's ready to lead your northern alliance army into battle and kings of war So there we have it, this Northern Alliance Lord is done and it's looking really good. Now it's taking a little bit longer than usual to get done but we all want our HQ models looking great don't we? Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video then please like and comment down below. If you've got any questions please ask, I'll be more than happy to answer. If you do want to support the channel then I'm really grateful for that, you can use some of the links in the description. They are affiliate links, it doesn't cost you anything additional but it does just put a few pennies in my pocket which helps me do the videos that you're watching. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next one.